colonizing another world sounds like a dream. Imagine stepping onto its surface, but something immediately goes wrong. You take your first breath and start to suffocate. After just a few more steps, you feel your whole body begin to boil and your skin begins to burn. Our journey today will show why most so-called habitable planets are actually death sentences, where every breath and every heartbeat is a struggle for survival. Our first stop today is Kepler-22b, a world once called a second Earth. Too good to be true. It's located in the habitable zone of its star at almost the perfect distance for liquid water. At first glance, it seems appealing, but the reality is far less friendly. Kepler-22b is larger than Earth, so gravity here is much stronger. As soon as you step onto this planet, you feel a crushing weight pulling you down. Every step takes twice the effort, and your muscles strain almost twice as hard as usual. After just a short walk, you're already gasping for air while your legs burn from fatigue. Scientists have found that there's an atmosphere that might be rich in oxygen. Great news, right? But in Kepler-22b's dense air, this blessing turns into a curse. At such high pressure, oxygen becomes toxic. With each breath, an excessive amount of O2 floods your circulatory system. At first, you feel dizzy and euphoric, but soon your vision blurs and your body starts convulsing. This is hyperoxia, rapid oxygen poisoning. Within just a few minutes, your heart starts racing wildly, then suddenly stops. Without a special airtight suit to regulate air pressure, you'd survive here only a few minutes. At first glance, this planet may seem like a perfect refuge, but it turns out to be too good to be safe. But even a perfect orbit and breathable air don't guarantee a safe haven. Some worlds face danger not from the air or gravity, but from their neighbors. Let's take a look at the compact TRAPPIST-1 system where planets crowd so closely that from one world you can see the others in the sky with the naked eye. It's like a colonist dream, seven worlds side by side, but such close quarters come at a cost. In particular, TRAPPIST-1D, one of the system's promising Earth-sized planets, offers a breathtaking view of its brothers and sisters, but here the problems start right under your feet. The gravitational pull of neighboring planets and the star creates powerful tidal forces. The crust is under constant tension, so tremors and earthquakes happen regularly. The ground itself bends and groans under the cosmic game of tug of war. A calm moment can instantly be shattered by a sudden jolt as the landscape begins to shift without warning right before your eyes. Cracks open beneath boulders, releasing plumes of dust and gas into the air, and each tremor comes without warning. A low rumble turning into a roar, scattering rocks like shrapnel and destroying any unsecured shelter. Moments later, a stellar flare burst overhead. A blinding wave of ultraviolet and X-ray radiation sweeps across the land, turning the horizon into a burning line of glare. TRAPPIST-1D orbits an aggressive red dwarf that scorches its planets with powerful flares and harsh stellar winds. The other planets you see in the sky serve as a reminder that the atmosphere here will eventually disappear entirely. Any human caught in the radiation would instantly lose consciousness from acute radiation sickness. And every time the star flares, another portion of the planet's air is stripped away into space. The result is devastating. Constant earthquakes below and relentless radiation above. Even if the temperature on the planet matches that of liquid water, 
the environment is far from friendly. Without a specialized suit and sturdy shelter, any interplanetary traveler would be doomed. The verdict is clear. In this so-called promising colony world, survival is absolutely impossible without full life support. But not all threats are as obvious as earthquakes or flares. Even an Earth-like planet that seems completely calm can hide invisible dangers. In this case, we're talking about Kepler-186f, often called one of the most Earth-like exoplanets. It's almost the same size as Earth and orbits within the gentle glow of its star's habitable zone. Let's imagine standing on 186f and feeling a calming sense of familiarity, normal gravity, warm light, perhaps an alien forest around us. It seems like you could take off your helmet and breathe in, but that would be a fatal mistake. Here, the exact composition of the air remains unknown, and the atmosphere could turn out to be a toxic cocktail completely foreign to our lungs. Models suggest it may contain high levels of carbon dioxide or traces of sulfur compounds rarely found on Earth. A single breath might carry gases the human body simply cannot process. If life ever developed there, its spores or pollen could cause allergic or toxic reactions in human physiology. Even the rain might differ in chemical makeup, perhaps slightly acidic due to volcanic emissions or mineral vapors, posing a risk of irritation to the skin or lungs. Without full isolation, including a sealed suit and specialized life support, there'd be no guarantee of surviving even a few hours. One way or another, the environment would find your weak spot. Radiation has already proven deadly on TRAPPIST-1D, but at our next destination, the bombardment never stops. Proxima Centauri b is the closest exoplanet to Earth, orbiting a star practically next door. In cosmic terms, this closeness made it famous. And if we ever venture on interstellar travel, Proxima Centauri would probably be first on the list. But such proximity does not make it friendly. Under a dim red sky, the surface of Proxima Centauri might seem quiet and eerie. The atmosphere, if it exists at all, is very thin. You're standing on a barren plain under the cold glow of a red dwarf until the sky suddenly flares. The star has released a powerful solar flare. A few minutes later, a wave of radiation crashes down onto the planet. At first, you feel nothing, since radiation's invisible, but the effect is deadly. The dose of ultraviolet and X-ray energy in this flare is hundreds of times higher than what a human can safely withstand. If you're in the open, you'll simply be incinerated. Even a protective suit would only delay the inevitable. Worse still, these flares are not an anomaly. The star Proxima erupts frequently. Repeated stellar storms have likely stripped away most of the planet's atmosphere, leaving a sparse amount of air that can no longer shield against cosmic forces. It's as if Proxima B's own sun is trying to make sure nothing survives there. Even on a quiet day, radiation levels on the planet are extremely high. Without a top-tier radiation-proof suit and shielded habitat, living cells wouldn't last more than a few seconds. The grim irony is this. Our nearest, potentially habitable planet and new home is, in essence, a death trap. Proximity and a cozy orbit are far from everything. Some planets really do resemble Earth, but their size and age makes them treacherous. Our next destination is one of those, Kepler 452b. Often called Earth's older sibling, it's about 60% larger in diameter and more than a billion years older than Earth. You might imagine it as a more mature Earth, possibly a thriving paradise with ancient forests. But older doesn't mean 
safer. Step onto 452B and you'll feel the difference instantly. Gravity presses down on you with crushing force. Every moment is a strain. Muscles ache under the extra weight. Even a physically fit person tires quickly. And after a few days, your body starts breaking down from the effort. According to telescope observations, the exoplanet lies in the habitable zone, but details remain unclear. Atmospheric models indicate elevated levels of carbon dioxide, potentially higher than what humans can tolerate, along with trace gases like sulfur dioxide or ammonia, which can irritate the lungs. Rainfall influenced by volcanic activity could register a pH around five, requiring on-site neutralization to protect skin and respiratory tracts. On Earth's older sibling planet, the true nature of its biosphere remains unknown. Nevertheless, let's hypothetically assume that such a biosphere exists. Current models of long-term chemical cycles suggest that plants may produce unfamiliar compounds, potentially harmful when inhaled or ingested by humans. And microbial life, if present, may use metabolic pathways that create byproducts toxic to human physiology. Until thorough sampling and quarantine measures confirm the local conditions, stepping outside a sealed habitat on this planet would expose a person to risks that cannot even be quantified. And despite being Earth's older sibling, that only makes her more efficient at destroying unwanted guests. So far, we've been traveling many light years away, but what about potential new homes closer to Earth? In fact, some of the moons in our own system have been considered as possible sites for colonies. Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus are two such cases. Both planetary satellites are covered in ice and beneath their crust lie global oceans. Where there is water, there is also the temptation to explore. However, the surfaces of Europa and Enceladus are about as hostile as it gets. Landing on Europa is like arriving in an alien Antarctica. It's stunningly beautiful, but lethally cold, around negative 256 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, exposed skin freezes in seconds, and a single unprotected breath would crystallize your lungs. On top of that, there's radiation. Jupiter's magnetic field traps intense radiation belts that constantly bombard the moon. Without strong shielding, you'd receive a fatal dose in less than one day. Orbiting Saturn, Enceladus faces similar extreme conditions. It's just as cold, and while Saturn's radiation is weaker, its buildup in the body over time is no less dangerous. The low gravity and lack of atmosphere on the surface mean there's not even a trace of air, leaving you like a colonist adrift in the vacuum of space. The only way to survive on these moons is to bring your own environment with you. We'd need sealed, heated bases with thick walls to block radiation, essentially a safe, warm bubble under the ice or inside a dome. Outside such shelters, any explorer would have to wear a fully insulated spacesuit with life support or else be frozen and irradiated within minutes. Europa and Enceladus show that water alone is not enough. Life there would require colossal infrastructure and constant life support. Beyond Earth-like planets and icy moons, some worlds stretch the boundaries of what we consider habitable. Super-Earths and ocean worlds sound promising by name, but they would be truly extreme tests of human survival. Take, for example, a super-Earth, a planet much more massive than our own. Gravity there is crushing, and every movement becomes exhausting. The atmosphere could be incredibly dense, like standing on the ocean floor. Even if it contains some oxygen, the air might be mostly carbon dioxide or other gases. One breath of this heavy alien mix without a suit could be fatal. On a planet like this, you'd need a fully sealed suit just to step outside or the pressure and toxic air would overwhelm you instantly. Now imagine a Hyson world 
or an ocean planet, a world completely enveloped in endless ocean. With no land to moderate the weather, storms have now become monstrous and they rage nonstop. The air is heavy, thick with moisture, and likely low in oxygen. You'd be gasping for breath even though surrounded by water. And where would people even live? You'd probably be stuck on ships or floating cities, constantly at the mercy of massive waves. The lack of solid ground means no way to grow food or build, which also means all materials would have to be brought along. In both scenarios, the super earth with its suffocating air and the ocean world with its relentless storms, the same rule applies. You cannot survive out in the open. To live on such planets, we'd have to create fully artificial environments. Imagine dome-shaped cities with controlled climates on a super earth or massive floating bases on a water world. We'd have to generate and manage every bit of air, food, and water. The only way to call these places home is to bring a piece of our old home with us. And so it's apparent that the term potentially habitable doesn't mean habitable for humans. A planet may have the right temperature or water, but still be filled with invisible poisons, crushing gravity, brutal weather, or deadly radiation. These distant worlds might suit whatever life forms live there, if any exist at all, but they're all entirely lethal to us. To survive on these worlds, we'll have to use the best of our technology. Sealed colonies, reliable life support systems, radiation shields, essentially creating a bubble of Earth on alien soil. And for now, the only true hospitable world we know is our home planet. All other places demand the extraordinary just to stay alive. But that won't stop us. Humans are explorers and builders. We'll try, and we'll likely build domes, underwater bases, and floating cities as we reach for the stars. We just need to remember that one mistake, one misstep, and this alien world will remind us in an instant that without our protective bubble, we don't belong there. So, are you really ready to live on another planet? <laughs>